Thank you for joining Next Labs. Today's topic we will be discussing Team Center digital rights management in the area of workflow to automate data protection. The use case overview as follows. We will have two simple Team Center workflows. The first workflow will be to apply protection in Team Center to a file. The second workflow will be to remove protection from a file within Team Center. There are three different Team Center users that will be used during this demonstration, Ed, Steve, and Hal. In the first scenario, use case A, Ed is to initiate and assign Steve to review a PDF doc. After Steve reviews and approves the request, the Team Center dispatcher will be triggered to protect the PDF document. In use case B, in the second workflow, Ed receives a protected Word doc assigned to Hal to review the protected Word doc. After Hal reviews and approves the request, the Team Center dispatch will be triggered to remove the file protection. So here we will see Ed on his desktop signing in to Team Center. Once Team Center loads, Hal will be on his home screen and go into the Next Labs test, in which case we will see that there is a PDF document as well as a Word document. It's an IP classification of secret for that particular document. And here, if we look at the name reference, we'll see that that Word doc is protected. It has a .nxl extension, which means it's protected by Next Labs within Team Center. If we look at the PDF within the name reference, we'll see there's no .nxl extension. So that means that file is not protected. Now we'll go out and look at the workflow design and look at a particular template that's been created. In this case, this is a Next Labs protection template that's been created for this workflow. And the second one is to unprotect the file. So in this case, if, if Ed at this point goes back and takes a look at that particular PDF, he can now go out pick that particular template that we just spoke about, in this case, the protection one. He can add that into the process and then assign a task. In this case, he's going to assign the user uh, for approval. So here, as we spoke about in the beginning, Steve will be the person that he's sending this to uh, for approval on the PDF in order to protect it. So he wants Steve to review this and then approve the process so that the file can be protected. So at this point, Ed has done the setup for processing the workflow. He's now, we're going to have Steve log in. And now Steve's going to go out to Team Center. Once Steve logs in, he can now go out and take a look at his work list. So here Steve is logged on. He'll go out and look at his work list, and he'll see that he has something in his inbox. So in this case, he has a task to perform. And here we'll see that he needs to sign off on the PDF that we want to do the protection against. The initiator was Ed. He can now go in and look to approve the sign off decision and can put a comment on here saying that it's approved. Once he says OK, there's no more, no more data at this point to view. He can look at the administrative console. And now we'll see that he took care of that task. And we'll see that listed within the dispatch request admin console. So at this point, he's approved that request. And now when Ed signs back in, if the workflow went accordingly, then the next part of the process should have been for it to protect the file. So here we're going to see Ed going back in, taking a look at that PDF file. 
he'll look at the console, see that it's been completed. So we saw it initiating before. Now we see it's been completed. And now when he takes a look at the name reference in here, we'll now see that it's got a .nxl extension. So the workflow processed the request after the approval by Steve and added the protection. Now we're going to go to use case B, as I mentioned earlier, where now it's going to be a file that's going to be approved by HAL to take protection off. So here we have Ed, again, looking at this case at the Word doc. He'll look at the name reference, and here we'll see that it does have the .nxl extension because it is a protected file at this point. Again, we're going to go back in and take a look at the different process templates, in this case the unprotect template. He's going to again assign a task. Here he'll pick a user as well. As mentioned earlier, it's going to be Hal. And Hal's a manufacturing manager, so he's going to add him in for him to take and look at this document to review and approve the change that Ed wants, in this case, unprotecting the Word doc. So in this uh, sense, Hal will now sign into Team Center. Again, he will go in and look at his work list. He'll see he has a message within his inbox. And once again, it's a task to perform. When he opens it and looks at the viewer, he's going to see that this is a no decision that's been made yet. So here he's going to go in, sign off on the decision, again approving it. Now we'll look at the console, and once again, we will see that it's in a preparing mode. He will exit, and now Ed will log back in once again. And now, in this instance, when Ed goes out and takes a look at those two files, here he's going to take a look at the Word doc this time. We'll see the Word doc comes up in the viewer. When he looks in the console, he'll now see that it's been completed. So the task that Hal approved is now completed. So once again, when he goes in and looks at the named references, we'll see that it's a dot docx file, not an NXL extension. So the protection has been removed. This concludes the demonstration. As you can see, within Team Center, you can not only manually protect and unprotect files, but in this scenario, we have a workflow process that can be implemented to do the same thing for protection or unprotecting of documents using the Team Center integration through SkyDRM file protection. Thank you for your time. This concludes our demonstration.